I go to sit down because they tell me, come take a seat. And everybody screams except me. All three, they're like, ah! And I was like, what? Well, hello and welcome. This is Low Vision Moments, the podcast all about those sometimes frustrating, potentially embarrassing, but often pretty comical things that happen when you are just going about your day with a visual impairment, blindness, or albinism. I'm Jenny Bovard. I'm your host, and I just got a haircut, so I'm taking hair out of my mouth because I don't know how to style it yet. And this is episode number 34. And I want to thank you for coming along for today's adventure. So speaking of adventure, guys, just a hot tip before we get anywhere or do anything this episode. If you're blind or visually impaired and you're looking for what I would maybe called like mid-level danger, a little adrenaline rush, a little hit to the adrenaline. Try yourself a Korean restaurant where you grill the food in the middle of the actual table. Trust me, I've tried it. It's doable, but it's exhilarating. And particularly if you have like no depth perception or detailed vision, it's a good time. Try it out. Also, you might learn that you really love kimchi and warm sake, but maybe that's just me. So are you wondering what's on the menu? for this episode. I know you are. And this time we have a special treat, Om Nom Nom. They are, today's guest rather, is a fellow member of our AMI family. She co-hosts and produces a daily live show on arts and entertainment and lifestyle and just so much insightful conversation on that show. The show is Kelly and Ramia. And I this might be creepy, but I love saying your name, Ramia Amuthan. Ramia Amuthan, welcome to the pod. Thanks, Jenny. Oh, it's so fun to be here already. And just because of the Korean food thing. Have you done it? You're telling me yes, but only with sighted friends. Like you're way adventurous. You're telling me you put your hand in the middle with the grill and the fire and the heat? Oh, yes. There were a lot of questions okay. like... Am I poking the right meat? Like, am I, you know, <laughs> I didn't know it's done? I, it, well, that was a, that's the adventurous part. That that was a lot of the the question and answer period. But let's not get off t too off topic. I could talk about that Korean place and kimchi for a while, but let's not do that. Let's let's talk about you for a second. You're also a super talented voice actor, and you're also the host of the podcast AMI Audio Book Review. So I'd love if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe. Some some of the other stellar work that you do. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah, so AMI Audiobook Review, Weekly Pod, we started season three in September. So we're very excited about all the fun changes because now we've um, upgraded, I say, from half hour to an hour pod and on AMI Audio. Uh, lots of audiobook talk, lots of book talk in general. Jenny, you will make an appearance sometime before the end of the year. So heads up. Yay. And um, Kelly and Remia, daily show, 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern time on AMI Audio, AMI TV. That's the plug but really it's just a fun time variety of subjects variety of guests and we get through everything and anything i personally am trying to implement more fun on the show so if you want to hear more quizzes more games uh write to us because that's the only way to get kelly mcdonald buckling under and saying <laughs> yes to those things Please. what he's, he seems like he's fun but maybe i'm mistaken it's ironic. so it's ironic. oh yeah i don't know you're definitely the fun one but don't tell him i said that <laughs> things have changed in the last six years i'm now the fun mm. one <laughs> mm, interesting the tables have turned yeah. Well, go and check out all of Ramia's content. You will not be disappointed. But let's get into some of this delicious food talk. It's one of my favorite things. And I'll admit, though, my weekly mealtime, dinnertime routine is not very exciting. We'll have dinner, my husband and I, and then we'll have to, without a doubt, play with our dog for about 10 minutes after eating dinner. It's a bit of a temper tantrum from him. If we don't, that's probably something that I did along the way. Uh, my fault. But we'll have our dinner. We'll play with the dog. We'll get tidied up, clean up the kitchen, wash the dishes, and then we'll settle in and watch a TV show. So on one night in particular, really recently, we had a pasta night. I love a pasta night. At least once a week we eat pasta with a nice tomato sauce or a pesto sauce, whatever. You can put anything on pasta pretty much and I'll eat it. So on this particular night, we had tomato sauce 
fine. I'm not a super messy eater. If someone is going to let me know that I have stains on my clothes, I do appreciate that, by the way. Don't hesitate. It's not going to upset me. I would rather know. So we have had our tomato pasta sauce, our pasta. We had done the dishes, played with the dog, and we had settled in to watch a little TV. Don't know which show was on the docket that night. It was probably... Probably something like Futurama, which has a new season out, or might have been Catching Up on Homeland. I don't remember. But we had watched our show, and after our little show, it is time for Rory, our dog, to go and have his final business meeting of the day, if you catch my drift. So I go approach the back door to let him out, and by the back door we have a series of hooks with all of my dog's stuff he's got his leashes and his little backpack that i bring with him to daycare he's got his doggy raincoat yeah we're these kind of people so this wall with the hooks is like a really light beige so i am over there getting his collar to let him outside and i like it looks like there might be something in my glasses or when i go from uh, a darker space to a brighter space. Sometimes I get like a little spottiness, a little spot floating around in my vision. Nothing to worry about. It's just my eyes adjusting to the light. So I blink a couple times and I'm like, mm, I think there's something in my glasses. And as this happens, my husband is coming into the kitchen, which is just adjacent to where I am. And I say, hey, I think there might be something in my glasses. And he looks at me and I look at him and he just loses it. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Jen, you have a... <laughs> You have a giant splotch. Splotch, is that a word? Yeah, that's so. You have a giant splotch, a giant spot of spaghetti sauce, of tomato sauce, like right in the middle of your glasses. Oh How did you not notice this was here? <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> hours Ramia I had cleaned I had watched television oh. and played with the dog and not even noticed right in the center of mm. my vision right in the middle of my glasses it was like tell me you have low vision without telling me you have <laughs> low vision well I walked around with spaghetti sauce in my glasses for hours, for hours. so there you go <laughs> if it was like right on a blind spot understandable no 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 right in the center right in the center in the center hours <laughs> and I accomplished a lot during that time but yeah, yeah it's uh it's they can it can hide in the most obvious of places mm -hmm. um spaghetti sauce me. tomato sauce yeah Avoiding I don't know sauce. I have food stories and I think it's because I'm just around food all the time so bound to happen where something collides with my disability and food so you know you've heard this before Jenny where people like myself have gone years and years denying disability or just being like I don't want to talk about it you know let's not bring it up unless it's visible or I accidentally do something crazy and we need to bring it up so there was one time in high school where a uh, couple of my girlfriends and I, we always made it a point to celebrate birthdays together. And sometimes you go out, sometimes you stay in. Now, when it came to my birthday, I was very anti-diva about it to the point of annoyance. You know, and I don't know. I don't have any suggestions. No, let's just not do anything. And so they were like, okay, let's just go to Christina's house. So we go to Christina's house. And the four of us uh, that night are hanging out. And there are these moments where I know that they've got something planned because two of them are going into the kitchen they're giggling they're uh talking to me but also not talking to me and I'm thinking of course of course there's a surprise I wonder what it could be probably the basics you know pop a bottle no sorry we don't drink it's high school um have oh. cake <laughs> <laughs> have dinner whatever get. Freudian slip much. <laughs> and then so there's a moment where they tell me okay it's time to sit down and this is one of these, like, not a full apartment. You kind of got a kitchenette. It's, it's Imagine a bachelor, right? But it's not really. She's just sharing the rest of the space. So all you really got is the living room slash bedroom attached to a kitchenette. And um, the only real places to sit are the bed. So I go and I sit down. And I can imagine it back in slow motion now. But what it happened was I go to sit down because they tell me, come, take a seat. And everybody screams except me all three they're like ah 
And I was like, what? But by that time, there was I had too much momentum. Obviously, the point was don't sit down, but it, I had too much momentum. I was already leaning back. I had my hand out ready to brace it myself. It was happening. It was happening. What I had done was put my hand completely in the cake, like absolute full <laughs> handprint cake situation. They had made me a cake sometime between now and yesterday and had decorated it it was gorgeous it was my 16th and um i had completely hand printed the heck out of it like you couldn't even tell what it was supposed to be like they had to describe <laughs> what it was beforehand because it was not at all reflective of what was was looking at now and i picked my hand out of the the cake and i thought Oh, I guess I'll just eat it off my hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, girl. Yes. It was really, really... You might as well follow through with that one, Ramia. Oh, unbelievable. But I've had so many moments like this where if I, I've sat on food, I've put my arm into food. I don't know why people want to leave food in places that aren't the table, though. This is my quarrel. This is a good point. I need to know how did your friends react, though, before we move on. My friends were giggly. They were very nice about it. They were giggly about it. And the thing is, at that time, like I said, you never knew what I could see and couldn't see. So maybe they thought, of course, I would know there's something on the bed. Maybe I wouldn't know that it was cake, but I would know that there's something to avoid it. Um, because my, my vision is so, like, right in between. Like, right in between, um, you know, you'd always have to question, right? Like, can you actually see that? Or can't you? And so... I didn't see the cake. It was too dark. And I went straight for the spot I usually sit on on the bed. So why would they leave the cake there? Anyways, as per their reactions, they were very sweet about it. Then we followed up with, well, did you not know there was a cake? Of course I didn't know there was a cake. Why would I put my hand right in the middle? I, I often <laughs> sit on my cakes. That's generally yeah. <laughs> the tradition. Guys, I'm drunk already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you're not drinking. You're 16. No, I'm not drinking. Sorry. No. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that they were kind and that they had a laugh with you. But you made a really good point about leaving food in places where you wouldn't normally leave food. Who leaves a cake on a bed? But it's it did sound like you were a little crunch, you know, little starved for space. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, like there was technically no table. Right. Wait, were there candles? That would have actually been helpful. The the light of the candles, I might have seen that. And that makes me think of a time when a couple years ago we had uh, our like sort of end of season blind sports Nova Scotia party. And so we had, there were a lot of us, a lot of people who were blind in the vicinity at this lovely house. And it was this big living room. And there, there were, uh, there was a bunch of food on like a big ottoman like a big footstool in the middle of the room which d is debatable as to whether like it should be used as a table or for your feet right but it just makes me think of okay number one at that party when I when I got there there was still cellophane like plastic wrap on a lot of the stuff so I legit tried to dip a chip when <laughs> the cellophane was still on there through the saran yeah no yeah nobody went nobody was really there no one really knew and i was just like oh shit okay there's still <laughs> stuff on there but not like an hour later didn't someone do almost what you did but they sat in this <gasps> same bowl of dip stop and, <laughs> yeah <laughs> were but, they excited <laughs> no 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 there are a bunch of us who were blind okay and so nobody even knew to be like hey don't <laughs> sit there you know what i mean we're not we're, we're not we're not seeing well enough or reacting quick to, like, enough to be up that area because <laughs> it's short it's short enough right like an ottoman i'm thinking is like knee height knee to thigh well, yeah height. he's just kind of, you know kind of squeezing in to join the conversation right. of the people in the area and just <laughs> sit Somebody don't sit in the dip yvonne the dip. <laughs> so that's where don't sit in the dip comes from um and that's a little inside joke amongst the blind sports folks but nice. i you know man so Wow, I'm kind of disappointed about the cake. You obviously didn't get to enjoy it to its full potential. No, at least not the aesthetics, but that's okay. I've sat completely in food as well. I've completely sat in a meal before when 
I was in Sri Lanka, and there the faking of blindness was surreal. Like, I don't know what about it. Like, when I think back at these things, I'm like, why wouldn't I just, why wouldn't people just talk about, you know, Ramya needs help? But um, it was really interesting. We had some kind of a formal-ish family gathering where everybody was very, you know, no, you go first. No, you eat. No, you. And... <laughs> The food was Sri Lankan food, so it was like crab curry, very seafood, crab curry, um, rice, dal, like things that you would put in a plate, but there was just a lot of everything, or a little of everything. And somebody, I guess, had put their food down because they wanted to go grab something that they forgot. I was scouting out the entire time a seat for me, right? And I had this spot picked out. I was like, okay, um, I know I've explored. This is where I'm going to sit when I go to get my food later and come back. This is my spot. It's perfectly in lighting that I can see the food. I can see the chair. I can see who's sitting across from me. And I had scouted this food up. But little did I realize that somebody had left their food there because they went to go to the kitchen. So I went all confident, by the way, because I had already scouted the spot out and went to go sit on this um, seat. And my ass was in their food like it was absolute crab curry on my bum <laughs> from somebody's plate. How do you recover from that? My aunt came over and she was like, okay, let's just walk away slowly. Let's go get you some <laughs> pants. You <laughs> poor thing. It's not a good look, Ramia. Sitting in the food is one thing, but the aftermath. And <laughs> <laughs> wait, what was that plate of food? Like that plate of food literally looked like someone sat in it. Like it was <laughs> half on me. Half so you just la you just exited the scene. You just left. Well, I think my aunt did her best to kind of cover me up while we walked. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole time, nobody was acknowledging my blindness. Like, it was just still the elephant in the room. It was so... Even after this point, you weren't like, I'm sorry, sure my were... eyes don't fucking work. <laughs> sorry. Like... No, it's like, can yeah. it happen to anybody? That's so strange. Why would I sit in that food? Oh, well, silly. Why would anyone put their food on a chair? Again, that Again. is my question. Again. See, that's not a you problem. That's a them problem. No, it is. But then Both it becomes your stories. pants problem. <laughs> <laughs> you poor thing. <laughs> Stop sitting in food, Ramia. This is our PSA. This is our public service announcement. Don't put food on places where people might potentially sit. Look. I say this all the time on the podcast, us blind and visually impaired people, we're walking amongst you, we are everywhere, and whether we're advertising that we're blind or visually impaired or not, we're, we we might be in the vicinity. I, I feel for you, but it's your family, and, and I just, yeah, I feel, it's... It's the fact that nobody was acknowledging. I think that that's adds the part to it. That's awkward as shit. Like, it's so awkward to do these things. Like, amongst my friends, we laughed about it. We knew, right? But amongst family and strangers and just, you know, the, the Tamil community over there, it was like, oh, no. Is this the first time people are finding out I'm blind because I sat in someone's crab curry and rice? <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> This whole time I was, quote, faking it, and now they know. I have to say, I adore talking with you, obviously. We are having a good laugh, and 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 you're the, you're also an acceptor of sweaty hugs, and that's oh, yeah. a special thing to me. If someone engages or accepts a sweaty hug from me mm -hmm. post a full day of playing goalball, yep. Which we got to do last May uh, when I was at Goalball Nationals. I that that was it for me. I was like, this Ramia, she's a keeper. And thank you again also for uh, referring Ben Aquaco, last episode's guest. It's all coming full circle now. And I, I brought that up not only to say thank you for the sweaty hug, and I think that that makes you special, like you're special in my books because you do that, but. That particular day was pretty eventful. I got to meet you in, in in person, and I don't know if we had met in person. No, this is our first time. Hence the sweaty hug. That was the first time, right? Yeah. And you're 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 so um you're so small. You're so you have such a big personality, and I was like, oh, you're you're shorter than me, and you made me feel tall. So thank you for that as well. Oh gosh, you're welcome. Anytime I can make somebody else feel tall. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to call you short, <laughs> <I'm kidding>. but. <laughs> 
I'm so kidding. After mm-hmm. that, that was like a really eventful day for me. And that when you play at Senior Goalball Nationals, we play, I was representing Nova Scotia. We brought home silver. Wahoo! Yeah. But when you're playing in one of these tournaments, you're playing like two or three games a day. It can be a pretty high intensity sport. Like I said, I was pretty sweaty by the end of the day. You're like warming up. You're cooling down you're resting on the floor and on hard benches like wooden benches throughout the day so the end of the day comes and you're snacky and you're hungry and one of my teammates bless her she has really specific nutritional needs and things that she can and cannot eat so I will admit I was really not into the idea of trying to navigate and walk to the local Wally World, the local Walmart, so she could get stocked up on her food. I was not sold on the idea originally. I don't know Ottawa. We were in Ottawa. I had been driven on a bus to the venue for competition. I had no idea where I was or my surroundings. No idea. But we had pretty decent directions from a local, someone who was competing on the Ontario team. Pretty decent directions how to get there and, you know, the power of Google Maps, right? So, and also knowing that Walmart is just a giant blue box. So if I can find the giant blue box in the distance, I can make my way there. Lo and behold, we did make it. I got her there as the navigator because she's not a google maps person so i got her there there was a sketchy muddy dirt trail that was pretty sketchy but we made it we got there this was quite the trek okay long day of goal ball we made it to the walmart we hunted for baskets like a shopping basket could not find one but you know what I did find I kicked a produce box on the floor and I picked that baby up and that was our shopping basket so I'm walking around with this big produce box and we're filling it up with her needed items that meet her nutritional requirements and allergic requirements and all of that I have never read so many labels in my damn life for this person Uh, I have I nearly killed my phone by using my magnifier and taking photos of these labels but we made it through we visited every section of that store we got her her stuff right i'm i'm just trying to paint a picture of how generous a person i am no i'm just kidding of course you're painting but it was quite the trek quite the day so we get to the end of our shopping trip and we wind up in the produce section it's kind of just next to the tills and i'm like ooh, i'm gonna go get myself my favorite snack that i like to have after a long day and that is the tart and juicy deliciousness that is pre-cut pineapple i love a little package of pre-cut pineapple very healthy Mm. of you Mm -hmm. (laughs) i got my pineapples went and paid for them i didn't even get to eat those babies right away we had to go back we had to walk back to the competition venue had to wait for the uber got in the uber got back to the hotel i sit on the couch in the hotel room which by the way i didn't think was very clean so i put a towel down (laughs) so (laughs) Picture it. Leave your food on that couch, okay? Hell no. Picture it. I'm sitting on this dirty hotel couch with a towel on it. I'm sweaty. I'm just disheveled from the day. And I just cannot wait to break into this pineapple. So open it up and I'm and I'm looking at it and I'm like, hmm, this something's different. (laughs) I bring it really close to my face and I see these aren't cubes. This is not how pineapples normally cut up. It's like a lot more pale than normal, too. What is going on here? Please don't tell me they were vegetables. I shrug it off and I hope for the best. It was almost as bad as vegetables. I was fuming, fuming Ramia when I discovered it was flipping mango. Oh, jeez. It was mango. If it was a good mango... I might have been like, okay, I'm going to eat this mango instead. Oh, no. It was like someone took the least ripe, worst part of all the mangoes in the store and put them in this little Uh, container. They were so hard. I can't even describe. It was like eating plastic. It was so hard. And I took everything in my being not to throw that freaking mango across the room. (laughs) Did you continue eating it because you were so mad? No, no. Oh, no. Hell no. I put it in the fridge and I left it there and it never saw the light of day again. Oh, the hotel staff can deal with that stupid mango. I was so mad. I'm so mad. After how generous you were, 
reading labels for everybody. I was such a saint, and this was my <laughs> repayment. Why didn't you read the label for yourself? You were done with the day at that point. Well, I picked it up and I looked at it in the grocery store, right? Like I, it looked, it was, it looked right. It looked right. But you're right. I, I can't read the labels normally on those prepackaged things without magnification. So I was like, this looks right. Let's get it. Yeah. I'd already almost killed my phone <laughs> by reading all the labels for my teammate, oh. St. Jenny over here. <laughs> I was so bad. I think the lights at the grocery stores need to stop playing tricks on us. And more staff. So I can be like, hey, can you show me the mango? And also, is this good mango or? If it's going to be mango, it better be the good mango. And before we wrap up this very fun conversation, mm. is there anything else that you want to share with us? Um, just that I feel around before I sit anywhere anymore, whether it be public transit, my own home, somebody else's home. I just don't take risks at all. So, uh, you know, you talked about the, the Korean food. That would be way, way adventurous for me now. Because I just, you know, I just want to sit there. The plate comes to me in front of me on the table, the only appropriate surface for food to be ever. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's my concluding statement. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of public service announcements yeah. here today. One, don't leave food where people might sit. Two, if you're blind if you have... or visually impaired, or no matter who you are, maybe yeah. look and, and if give a If it's a, a gray feel. area like an ottoman, just say no. Just, uh, just say no. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All good tips. All good tips. And if you want more Ramia, don't forget all of her content. We will include some links in the show notes. And I can't thank you enough for coming on, Ramia. We... We need to do more of this kind of thing more often. I mentioned at the top that you are you're a fabulous voice actor. Why don't you tell the folks where they can go and maybe play a game that features oh. your voice? Okay, well, the the one thing that I had done for voice acting for video games is called The Veil, which is a free game you can download onto the um, uh, Windows platform, so Microsoft. And that was fun. I appear there at some point, and it's it's a really good game as well. So check it out. You can also get it on the uh, PS4, actually, or the PlayStation, I should say, not just 4. And other than that, where am I? Like, I've just done narration all over the place. Um, my voice is the audio describer narration voice of White Tiger on Netflix. That's a good movie. That's my second shout-out. I think it's, that's plenty. That's plenty of me, Jenny. Oh. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for listening and watching and subscribing on YouTube and all your favorite podcast platforms. As always, if you've got any feedback or suggestions for the podcast, I would love to hear from you. You can send us an email to podcasts at ami.ca or give us a call at 1-866-509-4545. Once more, the number is 1-866-509-4545. Just make sure to mention low vision moments in that message please and thank you i am on instagram and tiktok you can come and follow me there under uber blonde four that is u-b-e-r-b-l-o-n-d-e -E, and the number four and while i doubt the following people would accept my sweaty hug they do make this podcast possible so a shout out to mark aflalo technical producer ryan delahanty podcast coordinator and manager at ami audio andy frank until next time, friends, remember, if you say Ramia Amuthan three times, a birthday cake will appear on your bed. 